Hey everybody, welcome back to Hartford Games. We are your hosts, I'm Tony. I'm Dave Perfect Temperazzo. And I'm Bill. And what do we have today, guys? We have a couple different variants of the Wii development unit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. One with an optical drive, one without. Mm -hmm. Wireless, non-wireless. There are a bunch of different versions based on what Nintendo perceived to be the developer's need. So we're going to mm -hmm. dive into what the differences are. We're going to take a look at a uh, Final Fantasy debug version of a game that's on one of these. Mm -hmm. We're going to see what the options are and just explore a little bit. Have fun. Sounds good to me. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Don't you spill on the <laughs> Wii Dev. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Units. <laughs> <laughs> not hot, they're hard for games. Games are hot, they're hard for games. Games are hot, they're hard for games. Games are hot, they're hard for games. Yeah, they're so hot. They're hot for games. Yeah, they're so hot. These are our Wii development units. Here we have two with optical drives. These are the RVTR units, and we also have an RVTH unit, which has a hard drive. So there are some differences between these two. This one is wireless. This one is wired. So what exactly does that mean? You kind of have this coaxial style input where you actually have to uh, plug in your controller on the bottom of the unit. You don't get the the luxury of the wireless Wiimote. I'm assuming this was some sort of cost-saving measure. I'm not 100% sure. So for our hard drive unit here, you can see that it has a number of buttons that actually mimic optical disks. So you have disk change, you have insert, and then you have a disk number right here. So it has eight through one. So basically you can press these buttons, toggle through, and find the sector of the hard drive that your game is saved to. And also here you can see it has a mini USB port right here, which these guys, the green ones, are in fact missing. So the assumption of course here is, is that you could get your games onto this thing via the USB port. Hopefully, otherwise I don't know how you do it. Magic of some sort. And here's one of the RVTR single layer discs. As you can see here, it's a burn style disc with the classic purple background here. See if we can get any of the other cast members that reflection uh but yeah so it's very plain jane that's the wii install disc the wii menu install disc and, and here we have a, a game these are very similar to the nr discs and fun fact the units with the optical drive the green one can play nr discs so first things first, we're going to showcase the Wii unit that has the hard drive internally. And the buttons on the front, like we mentioned earlier, sort of mimic an optical drive. And right now we have it set on the only slot that actually has a game in it. It's basically based on what Nintendo thought the developers would need, whether they'd want to be burning discs and testing those, or whether they would just wanted to throw a file onto a hard drive and test them. Right, because this might be like an earlier, like, let's just test the game itself, yes. versus this is by closer to launch and people are going to obviously insert discs, so maybe that's Probably. debugging versus more development. Yeah, depending. yeah. I mean, the, pro the problem with these is that they're less versatile because you can't like test a bunch of games, right? You can't just throw, you know, discs Dis in No, out. yeah, yeah, absolutely. You right, yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you're a developer, you're probably only working on one game at a time. Yeah. You know, you probably like every time you make a small change, you don't have to burn another disc. Yeah. So, you, yeah. so it yeah. just really depends on uh, what you need, what you want. And the reason why they have the color scheme is based off of the GameCube development life cycle. So you have your NR readers, which are green, which have optical drives. The optical drive Wii dev unit is green. And then you have your NPDP reader, which was a red, beautiful GameCube uh, <laughs> that I don't own one anymore, unfortunately, but basically you could throw an NPDP cartridge on the top and it was like hard drive based. It was red. Right. So it was this. As you can see here, the options are very limited. Uh, you have your Miiverse, you have your Wii menu uninstaller, which don't touch. Uh, it has a disc check without a disc, <laughs> right? So I'm guessing it just Mimics Image. that or does nothing. I'm curious. Who knows? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> We're good. No, no disc error. <laughs> no disc. So yeah, this is pretty much it for this particular unit. 
All right, so this is the RVT slash R console. This is the first one we're gonna showcase today that has an optical drive. Let's take another look around the menu and also showcase one of the games that is on the hard drive, the internal, the internal memory of the system. Got the usual disk screen. Channel, there. Menu, menu uninstaller. uninstaller. And my life as Dark Lord, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, so, which has some debug features. But before we jump into this, let's jump into the play logs. If you remember on the Wii, there was a calendar that would log how long you played, what you played. And I think this was sort of a family friendly feature because mom could go in and be like, hey, wait a minute, you played <laughs> whatever for Very like five hours, that. you should have done your homework or whatever. But if you just keep on scrolling back, <laughs> Keep on scrolling back, keep on scrolling back. Years, let the let the years pass. <laughs> we might be here a while, but. Yeah, <laughs> might be here a while, but we'll, we'll be able to see what the developers were messing around with at that point in time. We got it, we got it, boys. Found it. October 12th. Mm. What was it? Let's see. Today's, Today's history. Dummy, dummy title name. One second. <laughs> <laughs> they probably created it. Wow, we just spent like 20 minutes for that. Let's we keep did. on going. Let's we see what else did. we can find. All right. So they created the title and that was all they did. <laughs> this, year, this year, that was all they had to do this year, apparently. It is very weird playing a Wii with a cord. Yeah. <laughs> on the Wii mode. So again, we have a number of, well, limited options, but one of the more interesting ones is My Life as a Dark Lord, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's a sort of an offshoot Gaiden style Final Fantasy game, but what exactly is this game all about? Yeah, so you're actually playing as the bad guys, trying to build, you know, your own castle and build in the defenses, the monsters, that sort of thing, to fight off the heroes that are coming to invade it. This is very interesting to me because I, when I see Final Fantasy and you, you see the big titles and you know yep. Final Fantasy this, Final Fantasy that, and then you see this, my life is a Dark Lord, and you're like, <laughs> there, it just came out of nowhere. There are so many, like offshoot Final Fantasy games that started in this era and continue to this day. It's insane. If you actually look it up, there's a massive quantity of Final Fantasy titles. Really, shovelware. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's a huge title. It's very big fan base, so I, yeah, I can kind of see They're that. They're capitalizing on us for that one. <laughs> They're just like, let's just throw another title out there, yeah. and we're just going to be like Castle Defense and... Yeah, whatever. Why, why yeah. not? So. so let's jump into this. Uh, we're immediately greeted with a debug menu. The problem is, is that none of this really works. If you really select anything here, it'll just immediately crash yeah. the game. That's the problem. In its entirety. So... We're not gonna really show it, because what, <laughs> what you have to do is unplug the Wii, plug it back yes. in. Wow. I don't feel like doing all no that. No time for that. Yeah, so let's just jump into the game. Just got the tower, I can uh, place some floors. Got offensive, defensive, special, and support. Interesting. And then you can summon some monsters into each of these floors. They each have different strengths against different types, so melee is strong against ranged, range is strong against magic. So uh, let's take a look at the debug menu. If we hit Z, it brings up our options here. Get, Get all the dresses. dresses. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want all the dresses? That's yeah. right. Get all the floors, all the items, all the dresses. We just do the whole... Oh, got some, some Japanese in here. He's in here! Oh. Squirrel object count. Oh. It's interesting because we, we tried to select some of these and they don't really help us <laughs> at all. You can clear the stage with them though, right? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That's exactly what I'm trying to I died, know. so I don't know. <laughs> Victory! <laughs> Tony is magic. Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. Yeah. Instantaneously has cleared the stage with a reward of 50. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I did a pretty good... I do good work. Mm. Oh, we'll get all dresses. <laughs> we should get... We do oh, have all the dresses. look at all yeah. those dresses. Is there a skimpy dress? Yeah. Oh. That's nice. Dirty girl. Ooh. And once again, we have a cat dress. <laughs> I know. Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Yes! Thank you, Japan. So, of course, we had mentioned that we have these proprietary Wii discs. We had so, mentioned a lot of these a little bit more in-depth in our updates video on what NR and dev discs we have. But let's go ahead and throw in a dev disc. Now, quick note here, these will not play retail games. No, absolutely not. And these discs will not play on retail units. Right. So it's a vice versa thing. Yeah. Rogue Trooper. Rogue oh, Trooper, okay. All right. Nothing, nothing. Nope. Oh, we just shot somebody. Do, 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 try. Mm -mm. All right. Let's go ahead and jump back to the Wii menu. All right, so we're diving into the disc check option here. We're going to check our disc. We're going to check it. So basically, it's just reading the different sectors of the disc and seeing if they are okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. And push home to return to the main menu. And that's all that does. Yep. And it just... Okay. Literally does exactly what it says it's going to do, which is check your disc. <laughs> check I, your disc. I wish it was that simple at the doctor's. I'm yeah. not saying right now. <laughs> Doctor, can you check my disc? <laughs> now, we had mentioned that these are multi-purpose. They can also play NR discs, which are for the GameCube, which is awesome. Which is amazing, actually. It's yeah. really, really cool. So let's go ahead and put one in. Now, realistically, we'll probably need to attach the GameCube controller, but we can at least boot it with the There Wii it is. Out. Look at that. It's very cool. I would have yeah. never guessed that this would have ever worked. Honestly, I really would not. No, I, I wouldn't have either. No, like seriously, I would have never guessed this. And we have Baldur's Gate. So we have our last unit here. This one is the wireless unit. So now Dave is no longer tethered, which is always nice. But it's not booting up any menu, so we're going to go ahead and put in the Wii menu install disk and see what happens. So change the region to PAL. USA NTSC, your PAL, Japan NTSC, okay. Yep, I want PAL. Go, what system versions are there? One or two. Let's do two. Press the home button to start the install. Do not power off. <laughs> All right, so everything functioned just fine. We're gonna go ahead and eject. All right, press uh, home slash start to reboot. Now we should see the regular Wii menu. Yep, there, there we go. go. There it is. So in today's history, it has that dummy title name thing. So I wonder if oh, that's... Okay. Uh... So the dummy title that we saw in the previous system was yeah. probably when they installed... Yeah, the menu. The menu, the menu yeah. yeah. That's very true. And so again, we have our base options here. We have Miiverse, we have the Wii U menu uninstaller, and we have the disc check. But the good thing about this is that I actually have a PAL and R disc. <laughs> it's Sonic Adventure 2 for the GameCube. You do, that's true. Yeah, so let's go ahead and throw that in real quick, just to see if it boots up properly. Sure. Yeah, which well, it should, hopefully. <laughs> All right, yeah. cool, it works. All right, everybody, we hope that you, we, <laughs> hope that you enjoyed the episode today. Uh, and of course, hope you guys enjoyed the episode as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. We got to see a lot of things, um, one being Final Fantasy. You know, we got Cloud right here. He was representing us today. Um, <laughs> and we just fooled around. It was yeah. great. We saw some um, different units. Yep. yep, it's always good when, you know, we get to get our hands on a couple development units. We like their units. We have yeah, to play with love going around, so. love different units, love getting our hands on mm. stuff. <laughs> Thank you again, big time to Andrew for lending us these units to fool around and get our hands on <laughs> with. So cheers to you, sir. Thank you for Thank subbing. You. All that good stuff. We'll see you all next time. Thanks, you all. Okay.